Hello, welcome to fifth grade Team Lightning. My name is Kim Johnson. I'm going to be doing the voiceover for this Google Slides presentation. There will be a link where you can access this presentation to watch any of the videos that are embedded in here. You will see the link at the end of the presentation. I will not read everything on every slide to you. However, you can see that this slide is the table of contents. It includes everything that will be covered in this presentation. For the introductions, again, my name is Kim Johnson. I teach ELA for our team. I am entering my 20th year of teaching. My husband and I live in Avon Lake with our two rescue dogs. And you will see that every teacher on our team has pets. We are all animal lovers. Mrs. Hannah teaches science for our team. She has been teaching fifth grade at Troy for 25 years. She lives in Avon with her family. She has two dogs. She likes reading and biking and spending time with her family. Miss H. Douglas teaches math for our team. She has been teaching at Troy also for 25 years. She loves math, reading, cooking, being outside. She has a cat named Jack. Mrs. Wyland teaches social studies. She's been teaching fifth grade for 11 years. She has a husband and two young children and a dog named Scout and, sorry, a dog named Chip and a cat named Scout. Mrs. Schaefer is our intervention specialist. She is entering her 34th year of teaching and all of that has been in Avon Lake. She and her family live in North Olmsted. She did not mention it, but I know that she has a dog that she loves very much. You will see on this slide, these are the topics that students will learn in each particular subject. So you will see everything that will be covered in math. In ELA, we will do a lot of reading and various skills. In social studies, the fifth grade curriculum is the Western Hemisphere. And you will see topics in science there. Students will perform many fun experiments on those topics. This is the student schedule. HR stands for homeroom. So for example, the morning homeroom is from 745 to 751. This would be a time when students are making their way to their lockers and to their homeroom class. Homeroom spills over into first period. The core classes are math, science, ELA, and social studies. So you will see that each period is about 53 minutes long. So first period would be one of the core classes. Second period would be a different core class. Third period is academic extension for all fifth graders. Academic extension would be a time to get help from a teacher. It would be working with a teacher possibly in a small group setting. It would also include possibly having some time to work on homework or some team building activities. Later on in the year, it would also be a time when band and orchestra students go one day a week during academic extension for extra band and orchestra practice. Fourth period is the special schedule. One day a week would be devoted to a different special. Those classes include art, music, technology, phys ed, and band or orchestra. Fifth period would be the next core class. Sixth period is lunch and recess, and it is in that order. Students will eat first and then go out to recess. Seventh period is the last core class of the day. And then you'll see the afternoon homeroom. That would be a time for packing the backpack up, going to afternoon homeroom to get ready to leave for the day. If your child is going to be absent for any part or a full day of school, please make sure that you call this number to let the office know that your child will be absent. Each of the core classes use Google Classroom. There's a different Google Classroom for each of the core classes. Students at this point are probably very familiar with Google Classroom, and we will go over this during the first week of class. Google Classroom is a highly handy app that is used to post resources, announcements, classwork. It's really very handy. 
we like to use the slant method in our classroom slant is an acronym that stands for sit up lean forward ask and answer questions nod your head and track the speaker we want to make sure all our students are engaged in our lessons these are a few resources for student engagement they were highly applicable last year for the time period that many of us were online learning however they still apply to learning in class as well. These are some resources that you can look at on your own time. Our homework policy for our team is that your student should really not have a lot of homework. Most work should be able to be completed in class. It's designed to be done independently. However, there will certainly be times when your student will have some homework, especially if it's studying for a quiz or a test. And again, it's not that our students will have several hours of homework every night. That is never our goal. Our goal is to keep homework short but meaningful. If there are any problems or questions about homework, please let us know right away. These are three great resources for social and emotional health. We know that that is so important for our students. So there is a video here. There's an article from the Cleveland Clinic. And the last one is the email for our guidance counselor, Mr. Walsh. He's a wonderful resource. These are some parent videos and resources about these topics, accessing PowerSchool, Google Classroom for parents, how to navigate it if you need to, single sign on with Clever. Clever is an app where students can go to Clever and it's one sign on for all the different apps that we use. And then there's also a short video on the slant method. This is how to contact any of the team of teachers. You will see that what's highlighted in yellow is our main email address that is the best one to get a hold of us with the other emails that you'll see in blue are the google emails that we have through the school that's what students would be using that's what would be connected to our google classroom all of the teachers check their both emails daily we know that technology is something that we use quite a bit and we all tend to have a love-hate relationship with technology. We know sometimes there are times when technology can be difficult and it can be problematic. All of us have had technology issues at one point or another. So rule number one is don't panic. That's a good rule for all of us is to not panic and that we will get through it. And those are just some other tips on the screen there for how to troubleshoot technology. Some final words are that we're all very excited to be on this team and to teach your child. And please remind your child, have a positive attitude, keep up with any kind of daily work that they have. And this last bit of advice goes for students and for parents, ask for help when you need it. Don't wait for a small problem to become a big one. And then the last slide here is a quote that we all love, develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Even us teachers are lifelong learners. We all have a passion for learning. We're going to make it a great year.